I mean, obviously, you know, we felt Saquon was the best player in the draft. You know, he's, you know, in baseball they call it a five-tool player. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick, come up with five tools. But he, I haven't seen a guy like this in a long time, and I've been on, running around for doing this for 30 plus years. You know, Dave, the kid's so unique because of his size and his speed. He does, you know, he's got, he's got the ability to string together moves, which is to string together multiple moves. He's got the ability to step on the gas. He's got the, he's, he, he, he's, he can do what we call cross the formation. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of real, you know, good backs in this league. They don't have the speed to cross, go all the way across the formation. He's got that ability. Um, he's, it, it, we all know he can catch the heck out of the rock. He, he's, he's smart in blitz pickup. He sees it. And that's probably the biggest issue that all these young runners have. And, uh, and at the end, of the, he's powerful. He runs through tackles. He runs through hits. Um, and, you know, when we were in here before, we were talking about quarterbacks. And do they make everybody better? And if you think about it, this kid makes our quarterback better. He makes our wide receivers better. He makes our own line better. He makes our defense better because he has the, will have a much stronger ability to hold the ball. He's a great kid. He's a, you know, he's going to be great for our culture. And, uh, you know, like I said, he, I mean, he, he is the unanimous best player in the draft. So we're thrilled. I'm thrilled. I what really what am. What about the positional value argument? Well, you know, Steve, you know what I say about that? I think it's a crock. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, a great player is a great player. You know, Ernie and I have talked about it a lot. He's a touchdown maker. He is a touchdown maker. He is a threat to take it to the house every time he gets his hands on the ball. You know, so, uh, you know, like I said, I think a lot of that's nonsense. I think it's, I, I think it's someone who had this idea and, and uh, got into the analytics of it and did all these running backs and went through the whatever. There's, there's, hey, Jonathan Stewart's in his 10th year, and he's hardly lost anything. So, Steve, you know how I feel, I feel about that. I, 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 think, I, I don't believe in it. And listen, I don't care who you take. They, they can all get hurt. Nobody, nobody's immune. Dave, Dave, Dave Pat, Pat, Pat. Was this an easy pick for you, Dave? At the end of the day? At the end of the day? Yeah. Do I have to tell the truth? Yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously the evaluation was long and arduous, but it seemed like you liked him a month ago and you didn't. It did, nothing changed, Paul. You know, you, you can overthink it. Am I doing the right thing? It's a running back. All these people talk about this and this and this. You can make yourself a Michigan. You know that. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning Yiddish as we go here. Quite frankly, <laughs> <laughs> it is a little odd, but you know you can make yourself crazy about it. But it, you you can overthink things, and you know what? You got to go with your instincts and understanding what it takes to, you know, to put together a winning football team. Dave, did you for, for both you and Pat with the you know who your starting quarterback is, but with the acquisition of Saquon, would you consider this a vote of confidence for the future for Davis? I don't know that. I, I think Dave said it. We felt like this was the best player in the draft. We know the value he brings to our team. Uh, as a play caller, he's a three down running back. He can run it, he'll pass protect, he can catch it. So he can be on the field as long as he can handle it. Now, certainly we're going to sub him at times, but. Um, I don't know if it's a vote of confidence for Davis. We loved what we saw this weekend. He got better every week or every day. And we certainly all know what, what Eli brings to the table. So this is one pick. He's a tremendous player. 
Uh, he's going to do a lot for our offense, for our organization. And as everybody gets to know him as well as we got to know him, I think everybody's going to see how special this, this young man is. How much interest was there in the number two pick? How much interest? Yeah, from other teams. We had, we had such a strong conviction on Saquon that, we, I mean, I, I was talking to people. Not a lot, to be honest, but I was talking with people. But I wouldn't, I mean, we, we all had such a conviction on this kid that at the end of the day, you know, I mean, very frankly, today, <clears throat> excuse me, Baker Mayfield goes, the only reason that pick wasn't in at, you know, 9.58, was because we had to wait to the five minute mark. Otherwise, it would have been in. Did you have Did you have any significant enough offers that made you think, like not even today, even, but just through the last couple of weeks? You know, Pat, the, the short answer is no. You know, the short answer is not really. I mean, it, it's, you know, people call you and they want they they want the second pick of the draft for, you know, a bag of donuts, a hot pretzel, and a hot dog. You know, it's like you get away, leave me alone. I ain't got time to screw around. And that's what you get. Sam Darnold, did not, did, that didn't change the situation, the fact that he was there, increased team's interest. You didn't see a significant spike because... Jordan. They went Mayfield. Jordan, they went Mayfield. We would take a sake one. End of discussion. Pat, do you want, I mean, obviously, you know, at number two, you know, there's a certain reality. How long have you been thinking about Saquon and maybe doodling some things in your offensive thing to figure out what he can fit, where he can fit? Well, I, you know, in my spare time, certainly. I think, I think every every guy that we thought we would take, you know, in my mind, I had a role for. And, you know, the running back's an easy guy to fit into an offense. It's very simple. You can turn around and hand it to him. You know, it doesn't take a genius to do that, right? And then a lot of times when you're trying to throw the ball downfield and they cover them all, you can just drop it off to him, and that's a lot of times like a run. Or you can feature him in a passing game. So, you know, I think... Uh, I've seen the effects of a really, really good running back, not only on an offense, but on a team. You have to run the football, not just for your offense, you have to run it for your team. And so I've seen the effect that a, a great running back can have on teams. And so I was excited about the fact he was the best player in the draft. And I was excited about the fact that we were able to draft him. He's unique for me because he's got quickness, he's got speed, he can score touchdowns from any part of the field, and he has what what couple things that I'm looking for. Number one, he can catch the football, you know that's first <coughs> and foremost. He's got great vision, and then he has what we call in coaching collision balance. So when he goes through the hole, as somebody tries to tackle him, he can keep his balance. But also when he's stepping up to try to block someone. He's got a good set of lowers to drop his weight on him. So, um, you know, we're going to nitpick him, I'm sure, at some point. But this guy can do everything. Dave, you obviously, you're taking quarterback. You were pretty clear that you guys were set on Saquon Barkley. That I'm you, sorry? You, you were very clear that, that you were confident that this was the right choice for the last few weeks here. But you said you, you had people talking in your ear. You were sure listening to some people in the media as well. No. <laughs> Let me stop you right now. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get that corrected. What no. was... What was your second best option here if you weren't going to go say What's the best other argument you heard? I don't know that I want to answer that question, to be honest with you. I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to the kid. Dave, how much discussion was there? And obviously your quarterback's 37 years old. How much with the scouts, with the coaches, with you, was there a discussion about, look, do we need to try to maybe fall in love with one of these quarterbacks because we might need one here? That's, that, that, that tells you your answer right now. If you have to try to make yourself fall in love with a player, it's wrong. You will never be happy with the pick. You have to know, you have to go through the process, Paul. You know, as Theo Epstein said, you don't cheat the process. You get all the information. You give everybody their, their, their say at the, at the right time. And at the end of the day, you shouldn't have to talk yourself into a guy. If you're talking yourself into a guy, you're going to make a mistake. There was a player on our board, I'll tell you this, there's a player on our board as recently as three days ago that 
we couldn't figure him out. We didn't know where he fit. Coaches couldn't figure it, you know, weren't sure he was a fit. We as evaluators weren't sure, sure he was a fit. So you know what? At the end of the day, if you can't picture him, if you can't picture it, don't take him. That's really what it is. You know, you can't, if you have to make yourself fall in love with a guy, you're going to make a mistake. If you have to make, make yourself fall in love with a guy, you're not getting close. How much, do you guys, how much do you guys Dave, Dave, obviously Eli is 37, and this would have been a chance to maybe save yourself a quarterback. So what is the long-term plan at that quarterback? What's the long-term plan with the quarterback? He's going to play. I mean, I mean, you know, what do you want me to tell you? He's our quarterback. We believe in him. He threw the hell out of the ball for three days. There is, he has not lost one bit of arm strength, and I'm, fi I'm coming back five years later. So I'm at a, watching a quarterback in his prime, and now he's 37. We got to, you got to stop worrying about age. Oh, by the way, Julius Peppers played last year at 38. Mike Davis played at 37. There are some guys that are just freaks. Brady's 41. I mean, come on. Dave, you, think, Dave. you think he uh, he has only two years left on his current deal, though? I mean, are you? Do you I don't think? Discuss contract. I'm just saying. Do you think that he can conceivably play? We're past gonna find out. Pat, we're going to find out, aren't we? Dave. The guy you passed on was, was drafted right after you by the team across town. Uh, I'm sorry? The guy you passed on, Sam Darnold. One of oh, slow down, slow down. We passed on about 230,000 <laughs> players. He was the one that was drafted next. Jordan. By the team. Ju huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Answer it. Ask it. You don't want to answer it. Sorry. He was drafted by the team across town. <laughs> right. That's this is obviously kind of some. That's obviously. <laughs> That's obviously something they're going to be compared to each other, because natural. Okay. Is that something you guys recognize and you guys are? Jordan, Jordan, you guys have got to understand me. I don't care. All I care about is the New York Football Giants, and every decision we make will be in the best interest of the New York Football Giants. I don't care about that stuff. It doesn't bother me. And I know you're looking at me like I have, like I'm crazy. Not at all. I'm looking at you saying, I need you, I, I want you to say that. That's what we want to hear. That's why we ask you the question. I might know the answer. We're going to, every decision I make is going to be in the best interest of the New York football giants. It's going to be the best interest of, of, of this iconic franchise. Dave, who does, Dave. Say, who does Saquon remind you of? You know what? You guys are going to have to call Ernie. I got to be honest with you. I can't, I mean... The thing that makes him different is he's got the feet and speed of a little guy with the power and strength of a big guy. That's what makes him so darn unique. He's different. I mean, it's like he was touched by the hand of God, frankly. And I just, I can't, I can't give you a name, Steve. I wish I could. Call Ernesto. I mean, that's what you got to do. Dave, you, you've been pretty. Uh, we'll take a couple more. You've been pretty honest in your gold jacket test. Do you see Saquon Barkley as a potential Hall of Famer? And how do you expect him to handle? Obviously, you said that. So how do you expect him to handle those kind of expectations? Listen, you know we really. He, he's he's a wonderful kid, and there's going to be a load on him. He just had a baby, second pick in the draft, biggest media market in the country, coming to a three and thirteen team. Hey, the, the advice I'm going to give Saquon when I see him tomorrow night or Saturday, I'm going to tell him, be Saquon. That's it. That's all I want you to be. I don't want you to be everything to everybody. Just understand that take care of your football, the world will be at your feet. Dave, if he's a great return guy, do you risk him at that position? Oh, I'm going to let him on that. That's his, that's his decision. No, I mean, we're going to use him, but we're going to – you know, we're going to get him in the mix. We're going to get him going as soon as we can get him, get him here. And then uh, we're going to train him as a running back. You know, he'll perform return duties. But typically, not, not normally your first returner. You can get him the ball enough times. You know, I think when it comes down to touches and whatnot, uh, we, can, we can give him the ball other ways.
I'm sorry. We'll go both. I'm not really sure. Um, for as complete of a player as Barkley might be at this stage of the game, what can he learn when he gets in here, starts working with the coaches, starts working right. with Jonathan, uh, the other backs, right. the other players? What do you think he can still learn to take his game? You know. No, there's a lot to learn. He, you know, even though he's extremely talented, uh, he's still a rookie. He's got to get in here and learn our culture. Our offense is much more diverse than the one he was just uh, playing in. We're going to ask him to do more things. And, you know, in college, they just run a whole bunch of plays sometimes. You know, the one we don't run quite that many, and you got to be really good on the ones that you're involved in. Uh, but it's everything from here's your locker to here's your helmet, here's where the field is, and let's go play ball. So he, he's going to get indoctrinated like any rookie, and we're going to treat him like any rookie coming to our organization. Now, with that being said, if he is the best Saquon he can be, then he'll find his way into the lineup if he does what he's supposed to be doing, and he'll find a way to help lead this team. And I think that's, that's the challenge for him. But for the, first and foremost, we're going to treat him like a rookie as he comes in here. We got one more. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're a very polite group today. <laughs> we, we all know the stories from the conviction that Ernie had back in 2004 and what he felt about Eli and everything else. Throughout this process, I know Ernie didn't want to butt in too much, but right. do you see any similarities to the conviction that you have for Saquon that maybe Ernie had for Eli? Yes, I do. You know, it's, it's <clears throat> you know, when you take a, you know, Babbling like an idiot. When you when you take a guy this high, you know, and you know you've got that pick. You know, we uh, I got hired, and you know, f four to three, four days later, I know we got the second pick of the draft. And I've been thinking about that since then. And you know, evaluate our team, and then get you know, and then go through all the draft process. At again, like I told you guys the last time. When I watched a player on the defensive side playing Penn State, you know, I was like a three-year-old. I was watching Saquon. Were you thinking any other team like Cleveland had the same conviction on him? We we thought about it, Dave. I mean, you know, why not? Then what? I'm not going there. It's not it's not fair to the the, the rest of the players. Well, it was, I don't know who was against, but he breaks into the second level and he's got two linebackers there and a safety coming here and he strung together three moves and he's, he just he took it to the house. I, I, and I had to run it back a number of times and I had to say, say to myself, I know I wasn't drinking. You know, so, you know, you get to that, and, I mean, it, you just watched it, and you've seen all the other stuff. It's like, okay, put the clicker down, go to the next guy. Really, Tom. It really was. I'm not, Pat, I, I wish I could. That's one of them. There was one against SC that was tremendous. There, there's, there's a handful of them that you guys vote on. They were they're all pretty good. And Dave, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, 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 at, at what point was that? Like a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago? No, I did Saquon. I probably did him in March when I really looked, you know, finally started really looking at film. And because uh, everybody around here kept banging on me, you got to watch Saquon, you got to watch <laughs> Saquon. I said, all right, I'll watch him. You know, give me a moment. And I mean, he's just, he's just so gifted. Coach, did you did you guys think at all? Did you guys think at all that you were being too complimentary of Saquon at all through this process that you were kind of giving away anything? I don't. I don't. I didn't do much talking at all, so I, I don't. When we've asked you about Saquon, you've been complimentary. Of him. Right. Yeah. No, because he he is a terrific player. Coach, do you see him as a Le'Veon Bell type back where he gets 25, 27 touches a game? He could be. I mean, he could handle that type of a load if, if need be. Um, you know, we'll just have to see as we go and put this thing together. You know, he's one of a bunch of guys that we're going to get in the mix. You know, Eli, him, Odell, Evan, you know. And ideally, if we can spread the ball around and block them well, um, 
Shep. I mean, our, we, we've got a lot of really good players, and um, he's going to be one of them. Kim, Kim, you you're good? All right. All right. All right. I'm sorry? Nope. You're never done. Oh. You're never done. I